Hi, and welcome to this video by Hubs on Pavaxis CNC machining. My name is Michele and I'm a mechanical engineer and today we're going to look at what Pavaxis machining is and how it works. In order to do that, we're going to look at a video by Jordan Hart on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Let's go. In continuous Pavaxis machining, the part can be cut along from five different axes. And that's because the tool and the plate move together at the same time, allowing us to create more complex geometries and non-conventional shapes. You can see what that looks like right here. It starts with the CAM software, like every type of CNC machining, and then it's then translated into real life. And you can see how all the axes and the tool are moving together. It's really cool to look at. Let's look at the whole section again and just notice how both the tool and the plate are moving simultaneously. And we can see that in another example here as well. By the way, this is exactly the main difference between five axes and three axes. The three axis machining, as the word says, allows the machining along three directions, X, Y, and Z. The X directions allows the movement from left to right, the Y direction allows the movement from front to back, while the Z direction allows the movement from top to bottom. In five axis machining is that we have two additional axes, which are the A axis and the V axis. The A axis rotates around X and allows the rotation uh, front or back while the B axis allows the rotation around Y, so the rotation left or right. If we look at the video here, we can see how the part is being moved around, and it's very important to highlight because then we need what is called a dynamic work offset. A dynamic work offset basically makes sure that all the axes lie in the zero position after rotation. And it's very important because if we don't have that, every time uh, the part moves, we will need to reprogram the tool path again. So it's very important to have it if uh, we work with five axis machine. Let's look at another example of this. Look at the plate moving here. That's typical of axis behavior. You will not see that happening in three axis machining. Let's take one more look. This is another example, and you can see how the workpiece is rotating without any human interaction. In a three axis machining, that will not be possible. I want to show you now a great part of Jordan's video here, where we first see what the five axis motion looks like in the CAM software and what then looks like in reality. You can clearly see how the tool and the workpiece moving together. It's so cool. Think about this like a dance, a dance between the plate and the tool. Let's have another look. You really can't get enough of this. It's good to mention that, of course, in order to have this sort of geometry to this sort of machining, you need to have a proper CAM software. And the programming between three axis and five axis is much more complicated. It's also very important to check the dimensions here. Of course, the plate size is dictated by the part size, but what we also need to consider here is the machine size dictated by the rotary size. Because of course, like track is machining, the bigger the part, the bigger the plate. But here, if we are rotating a bigger part, we need to consider a bigger machine. Ah, I love this example of CAM software simulation. I think this is my favorite one. It really highlights how the plate movement syncs with the tool movement. Amazing to look at. Here at the end of the video, which is something which is very common for CNC machining, which is the use of coolant. As you all know, when you're machining a part, you have a lot of heat generated by the interaction between the tool and the plate. But it's very important to highlight that we need to dissipate that heat. So of course we can stop the machine, and let the heat dissipate naturally from the tool and from the part. However, what we can do in order to not stop production is the use of a coolant uh, where the tool is interacting with the part. And that's great for two reasons. Of course, it, it allows us not to stop the production, uh, but it also reduces the tool wear between the tool and the part. So, to sum up, 5-axis allows us to produce complex designs, parts with fewer setups, increased accuracy, shorter cycle time, and of course, less scraps. Since 3-axis machine can only cut along 3-axis, it will not be the best solution for non-conventional shapes or designs with deep narrows or deep cavities. While processing parts with complex geometries, operators, of course, will need to rotate the part manually, which ultimately increases time and costs. That was it for a short 5-axis CNC machining video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next video.